We are back. Yes. Hello, we can see you. I have already introduced you. My name is Snijana and we are welcoming you uh, to the conference, web conference. This is the fourth time we are here. And this time the uh, topic is digital brand management, place brand management. And uh, the theme you are going to present is from city branding to implementation, avoiding greenwashing and adapting sustainable urban transformation. A very, very intriguing topic. You so you're welcome to start. Um, you should know that uh, actually maybe not many people in the world have been to Tomsk, but I have been to your city a few years ago. So I know more or less <laughs> what it looks like. I, I, had, I gave a talk um, at the Tomsk Polytechnic University. So your colleagues, I, I paid them a visit. Can I hear me? Yes, we know that when we visited uh, Delft, Scott told us that you had visited our city and was uh, it, it was not. We wanted to talk to you so much to meet you, but no. So you are no, welcome I, to come I here just, again. I, 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 I did, there was no time then to uh, to visit your university. Also, it's only to indicate that I'm a little bit familiar with your. Um, I a very special place that more people know. Um, I'm a bad boy because the, the slides that you see on the screen are still from my previous university. I have worked at Delft University of Technology for 25 years, but just uh, on the 1st of September I made a move and now I work for Erasmus University for the Rotterdam School of Management um, and the Erasmus School of Law. However, uh, the presentation that I'm giving you is still in the style of TU Delft because yeah, I was kind of invited from one of your students who went from Tomsk to Delft uh, to give this talk. Yes, right. We know that. And uh, again, we are yeah. welcoming okay. you to start and we hope that we will have uh, five minutes okay. for questions yeah, I, and I you have 15 minutes for your review. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, um, what, what if cities want to promote themselves, what they basically do um, is they can ask others uh, to give positive comments on them. For instance, my ex many, uh, many of my examples are based on, the, on China. Uh, this, for instance, is on Xiamen. Um, and a South Korean engineer called Won Ho Moon was asked to say, I think Xiamen is one of the most attractive cities for foreigners who work in China. The city is very nice and wonderful, and this place is a very safe place for foreigners and their fans. And of course, that's what you want people to say about your city. Another example, actually, with a Russian expert, Vladimir Kabanov, involved, Qingdao, a, a coastal city in China, possesses a very good, quick developing infrastructure, which combined with a beautiful architecture, landscape, ensemble, and nature color. I can see Qingdao City as a fine place for the realization of creative uh, projects, business, and rest. Actually, word by mouth promotion is among the most effective ones. Now, in this era of ecological modernization, basically a lot of cities cloak themselves um, in a green image. We have Grenoble Eco Quartier, Tianjin Eco City. Melbourne, knowledge city, but also green city. Amsterdam is a smart city. Guangzhou has a knowledge city. Songdo, the new city in, in South Korea, close to its capital, uh, it has a ubiquitous eco city. And Ningbo, lesser known, but not far from Shanghai, has a smart city, was the first smart city in China. So what you see in all these terms, they're just a number of examples, but there are many, many more, um, is that for their promotion, they have to be, you know, economically attractive and smart and high tech, but they all have to mix this with a green image, uh, especially in times of you no know, global warming, but also air quality problems as they appear, especially in, uh, in developing countries, it's vital uh, to include that. Now, what we see here on this is it simply a list of possible terms sustainable city, eco-city, low-carbon city, green, livable, resilient, knowledge, ubiquitous, smart, intelligent, information, digital. There are also many more like compact, 
uh, and Slim City, and uh, many, many more. What we did in, the, in our research was we investigated in the literature um, how many times various terms appeared, uh, and that was a lot. And until 2013, 2014, it was the sustainable city worldwide um, that was basically the most popular term. And it's a kind of umbrella term. But more, and here you see that more, uh, more recently, the smart city had overtaken uh, the sustainable city as the most popular term. Um, and if you take the figures, which are not shown here until 2016, 2017, then you would see that the smart city has really gone through the roof and that all the others are there, but remain far behind. So apparently the smart city has sort of won the game, if you wish. Um, and the reason is presumably that with the environment, you can't really make money. You know, of course, it's nice to appear green. But if making yourself green, like with more parks or with interventions in the industrial structures, you spend money rather than earn money, that is not really what cities or the industry want. Now, the smart city kind of helps that by proposing a technological approach uh, to environmental problems. Whether that really works is a different matter, but this is attractive to government and industry. And this is presumably the reason why global warming, air quality, and other forms of pollution have been changed um, into uh, the smart city concept. We also see here that many of those city types are related. The sustainable city is here, eco city, smart city. Uh, in the most recent work that we have not published yet, you will see that basically the smart city at the center and the sustainable city has been moved a little bit to the periphery. Um, the sustainable city is a kind of general concept. Uh, sustainability, as you know, has now acquired many different meanings. It is good for the environment, but there is also social sustainability, economic sustainability. I've even read about cultural sustainability. So basically, that has become the catch-all term that is never wrong to use. Nobody is opposed to sustainability, but its meaningfulness has declined over the years. The eco city started out um, as a concept which was really environment, uh, environmental. You know, there were communities living, uh, in, especially in North America, with a very natural return to nature lifestyle. But over time, it has basically been adopted. And in a country like China, for instance, Basically, now the eco city is simply a green place. Uh, when in, in Western countries in the 1970s, the report of the Club of Rome appeared and gave a shock to the Europe and North America about the depletion of natural resources and the pollution of the environment. At that time, China, for instance, was in the middle of the Cultural Revolution. And I, I have to think what Russia was like in the early 70s. But I think there must have been other problems in Russia also at that time. So the eco city concept, when it appeared in Europe, um, it was not as powerful um, in communist countries as it was in capitalist countries. And now, finally, when it got adopted, for instance, in China, it acquired the meaning of an attractive place for people to live. And you can give all kinds of indicators, environmental, economic, social, but it doesn't mean that people want to live in nature anymore. It's not a lifestyle where you completely live in harmony with nature. It means more something like an attractive green place and uh, not much more. Low carbon city is more specific, uh, but a low carbon city uh, is specifically about reducing uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Sometimes it is kind of interwoven with eco, but the original meaning is different. Green city has little meaning. Here, for instance, you see a lot of trees, but if you have so much car traffic in your city, in reality, it is not environmentally friendly at all. Compact cities, for instance, I can give more examples, but compact, compact cities are advantageous to the environment because a lot of activities for many people are put in a small place. So it means that you consume less energy, 
It also means that you consume less space, which is generally good. On the other hand, if you look at a city like Hong Kong, but perhaps also Moscow and St. Petersburg, which are very densely populated, then it, uh, the air pollution in such cities tends to be higher because a lot of people pollute in a small place. So broader is good for the environment, but for air quality, it's not good. I, I could give you a few more examples, like the livable city and the resilient city, which is obviously more about protecting yourself against flooding, and the knowledge city, which is more about promoting knowledge uh, at, at the interplay of university, government, and industry, but they all have their own specifics, and they are not the same. Often, if a city wants to be popular, it looks at those different terms and uses them almost interchangeably, because the myth is that if you do less industry, less manufacturing, uh, and more knowledge creation, that this is good for the environment. However, partly this is a myth, because the production has to take place somewhere anyway. You know, if we, if we invest more in knowledge, but we still consume as many products as before, it simply means that the pollution happens elsewhere. Um, but that is maybe not the problem of the cities that promote themselves. Um, if they promote themselves as smart cities of, or smart cities, this gives them a better, more modern and environmentally friendly image, even if actually the use of computers is not so environmentally friendly. I don't know if you've ever managed to dispose of your computer equipment, but believe me, it's not good for the environment. So partly you can say that services industries are perhaps slightly more visibly polluting, but they are, they are not necessarily better for the environment. Then you have creative cities, information cities, digital cities, beginning with Amsterdam, which is now calling itself a smart city, uh, intelligent cities. I don't know where this empty one comes from. Okay, uh, there are many, but now partly this use of city labels is a way uh, for cities to promote themselves. However, it's part of branding, if you wish, but it's not the whole story. The whole story of city branding, as I'm sure you all know, is broader. It also involves, according to the literature, for instance, establishing a city brand identity uh, and maybe uh, promoting yourself to different target groups in different ways. Um, in the world of urban greening, uh, there is this very famous example that actually I personally visit, which is called Mesdar City. Mesdar City was supposed to be the world's first zero carbon or negative carbon city uh, in Abu Dhabi. Um, as you may know, the Arab world, you know, living in a desert and then building up an economy there uh, creates a great strain on the environment. Uh, use it, you have rel relatively little water there, relatively little you know, green uh, greenery. So if you promote yourself there economically, as Abu Dhabi and Dubai uh, Emirates and even, you know, Saudi Arabia have done, it's difficult to do this in an environmentally friendly way. In fact, those nations have the, among the largest carbon footprints in the world and also ecological footprints. Um, but in this new e world economy, you cannot afford to have such a bad environmental image anymore. So what Mestar City has done in the past, it has poured a whole lot of money um, into uh, a, a new technological city called the zero carbon city Mestar. Um, and it hoped that it would attract new industries, new green industries to make this city basically leading in the world of green technologies and it has massively branded itself worldwide almost everybody has heard of it somehow of course in the arab world is famous but also if you look at on, on wikipedia or other you know channels global channels of information then you come across mestar city um problem is however that in spite of good uh, intentions relatively little has happened since the early days it is still a small place 
it is still relatively far away from capital Abu Dhabi, uh, like 25 or 27 kilometers away, I believe, in the middle of the desert, and it hasn't grown much since. And the investments there have stopped, and private investors have not believed much that it would be meaningful in the future. So if you go to the exhibition hall there, you see that the number of initiatives over time has shrunk more and more. But still, the brand name Mestar City is strong. Uh, a lot of people know about it, and those who have not been there still stand in awe for this concept. So this shows that um, actually branding uh, can be a very strong tool. However, um, if the brand uh, if the brand image is strong, but people you know start testing it, then you have to be sure that you can really deliver what you promise. And that is maybe the core of my presentation here. Long-term viability of a brand can only work if you have followed it up by action. Now then, that brings me to the idea what uh, typical features there are in city branding. Underlying idea, as I'm sure you all know, is the attraction of visitors, industry, and investors. In the case of Mestar, it was especially for investors. Um, it was a concept that were, or it was originally derived from the private sector, but it had to be adapted to the public sector, um, which has a more complex set of tasks. You know, government work is actually more difficult than company work because you have many more goals that come into play. You have many more stakeholders to satisfy. Uh, city uh, is not a, you know, a bread. The city has so many features and it means so many different things to different people that it's difficult to take that into account altogether in one brand. However, something can be defined as its essence if you wish. The goal of branding goes beyond marketing or promotion. It's, uh, it should have more profound consequences. It should lead to policy action and it leads, should lead investors, visitors and industry to loyalty. You should like they have to bear this brand in their head all the time. It's almost like you are really branded. Boom. Um, so it has this loyalty aspect and it has this policy aspect. Now, according to me and also many people in the literature, basically to be a good brand, it has to connect with history. Even if it's a short history, uh, it should have a connection with history. So very, let's say, ancient cities in Russia, they can refer to their history, at least make use of it sometimes. If they are only industrial cities that appeared a few decades ago, then they have to emphasize other things. But ignoring the past uh, is difficult. Uh, however, you can do this in a creative way. And you have to take into account of present features, you know, what, what population have you got, um, what industries are prevalent, and of course, it has to reflect future wishes. Branding is also for the future. So it has to be a mixture of that. It has to formulate future wishes, but based on present situation and historical heritage. Now, um, at the same time, not everybody can have the same brand. In fact, the brand should be unique. So it should be different from other cities. It should have something distinct. Uh, it should be ambitious, but not overly ambitious. If everybody can tell that this is not possibly not going to happen, if you're an industrial city and you call yourself a historical capital or the greenest city in Russia, nobody's going to believe you. Uh, so, in fact, you have to formulate them in an ambitious way, but realistic, something that people can believe in. And at the same time, as often exclaimed in the literature, um, it should be developed with stakeholders uh, so that it's locally embedded. I think I, uh, I should nearly wrap up, right? And voila. Um, what we did is we collected a number of city brand identities in st cities in the Netherlands, uh, Ramstad. For instance, the city of The Hague, where I am now located, is a world city of, at the sea, but also a, a city of peace and justice. Because all the courts of the international courts for justice are here, they basically lean on that image. Um, and while using those identities, they all, all take certain positions, like their labels. So Amsterdam, you see, they, they emphasize the smart very much. Almere, which is close to Amsterdam, well, uh, does the same. 
all the cities find sustainability attractive. So all the cities call themselves sustainable. The Hague a little bit less, but the Hague focuses more on low carbon and on green. For instance. University cities, perhaps Tomsk do that, also Delft and Leiden, they normally would emphasize that they are a knowledge city. Um, in, in China, it is similar. Shanghai has everything so big, it calls itself a comprehensive global city. I think it's a claim that is realistic. But not far from Shanghai, uh, Shanghai is Nanjing, an ancient capital, and now the capital of uh, Jiangsu province. Uh, it calls itself a famous ancient capital. It also emphasized that it's good in new industries, but it calls itself still a famous ancient capital. Whereas Hangzhou, the capital of Zhejiang province, also not far away, is an oriental city of quality. Along with Shenzhen, it's, for instance, China's capital of innovation. IT is very strong there. Um, so they emphasize, you know, we are oriental, fine. Ori Orient is rather big. And quality, that tends to be attractive. And it kind of emphasizes aspects that you will want to have. I must add to this, cities that are already strong also have an easier job in doing their branding. If you are unpopular or nobody knows you, it's really a tougher job to do the branding right, but also more interesting and more challenging. Now, I'm going to skip a couple of slides, um, and then I would, would like to conclude by saying that city branding, as it is done now, is a promising entry point for ecological modernization. People who say that city branding is basically greenwashing, um, are wrong, or at least potentially wrong. Um, eco and smart and other things can be used as, as a beginning of transformation. But this transformation is not automatic. So if you start the branding, it doesn't mean that the policy implementation uh, will, will follow. So this branding is practiced increasingly, and some cities nowadays do this in very sophisticated ways. But it has to be connected with how you are developing. So if you want to go through a sustainable urban transformation, it basically means that policymakers have to show commitment. So this branding doesn't have to stay just in a tourist department or in the promotion department. No, it must be shared all across the board by all the leaders of the city and the heads of the various departments. It must be a policy commitment that they all make and that they all engage in in their own way. So it, they have to see the ramifications of this commitment for their own departments to make sure that everybody really recognizes this brand and acts on it. So brands and vision require translation into strategies and implementation. If you don't do that, in the long term, credibility is lost. People eventually see what you're doing. It may take five years, it may take 10 years, eventually it will come. So the municipal organization should be aligned with the brand in order to make it effective. And then identity, as cities have them, policy action and public image, they will converge gradually. At the same time, if they've done their job right, the unicity of their city will remain intact and can be preserved. That is basically the definition of a strong brand. Our faculty staff, we have guests, and uh, uh, it was very interesting the cases and the illustrations are great, and we want to thank you for a wonderful structure. The Netherlands is a land of architects, and the architecture of your presentation is perfect also, so thank you very much for that. Isn't it paradoxical that the country that was built um, thanks to uh, oil and carbon and natural resources now want to get rid of them? <laughs> it's just my comment. I was thinking about that, about the United uh, Arabian Emirates. So it's interesting. If it was not for the natural resources, they wouldn't be with us True. right now, yeah. probably. So um, we have a, maybe yeah. a short question from the audience. Very short. Anything? Well, uh, we'll continue the discussion and we will um, probably have more questions on our website uh, on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much again for Thank your you time for your participation. We have to go to the next. Yes, we have to move to the next speaker. Yes, and uh, we hope to see you I, in Tomsk again. My, 
It will be now definitely in, my, in my our plan. university. Let's see if we can get that organized. Okay, thank you.